In this film, Come on, boy. I'm going to be looking at how two very different schools of painting in West Cornwall were affected by their environment, the North Coast and St Ives and New Lynn, the South Coast. What I've done is I've put the New Lynn school on the left here, examples of, and examples of St Ives painters here. So now we're going to have a closer look. Here we have an example of a Newland painter, Stan at Forbes, and he's painted this, I would say, on the beach at St Michael's Mount. Actually, it's a grey day, but you're still looking into the light and you can still see the light on the horizon. And importantly, you can see that it's about tone. It's not about colour and shape and that there's a great depth of field. You know, you can really feel that you're seeing about 50 miles, which is the furthest you can see to the horizon. And there's a tiny dot here. So you're, you're taking in lots of tone, lots of depth of field, but not colour. So looking at another artist who lives on the south coast, well, actually lives, he is a living artist, as opposed to Stan at Forbes, is Ken Howard. And this is a wonderful painting of his studio, which is in Mausel, which is just around the corner from the other painting I showed you. And um, you can see that it's exactly what we've been talking about. It's very much about tone, and uh, you've got a fantastic depth of field. You can really see a long way out of these windows, and the light's pouring in. It's about tone and depth of field. And I'd like to make a comparison now with the St Ives School. And here's a painting by Christopher Wood. Now Christopher Wood lived in St Ives really at the beginning of the modernist movement. And immediately it looks very, very different. You can see colour and shape and it's very flat. Now you, you might say, oh well, it's because it's quite naive. But I don't think it's the reason. The important thing here is that I firmly believe that you couldn't do this painting in a studio in St Michael's Mount or Newlyn, and you couldn't do this painting in St Ives. Interestingly, you can see that there's no shadows on this painting, and that is what happens when you look out of a, a, a Porthmere studio. You don't see many shadows because the, the light is falling behind you. His painting is so much about colour and shape and not about depth of field. Here is a painting, well, two paintings by Ben Nicholson. Now, he was really the forerunner of the modernist movement in St Ives. And there's a big jump from the Christopher Wood to the Ben Nicholson. I mean, clearly, there's no figuration here. But the principle is the same, which is that this is all about shape and colour. This is largely about shape and colour. So you might say these. Ben Nicholson's have got nothing whatsoever to do with being on a beach looking out to sea on the north coast. But I think they were looking out of their studios and it was all around them, shape and colour. It was the air they breathed. They couldn't produce these paintings had they lived in Newlyn or Mausel. It would have been like swimming against the tide. The environment lent itself to the type of paintings they were doing. Let's look at all three paintings together. The Ken Howard, the Ben Nicholson and the Christopher Wood. And you've got two paintings of windows and the result is completely different. And the one in the middle, I would say, is a result of an absorbing of that environment. I'm going to look at two more St Ives painters. So we have Patrick Heron here and um, Sandra Blow, and I think you can see that they're largely about colour and shape uh, and I firmly believe that that was as a result of living in St Ives and even if it's subliminal it filtered into their work. What's interesting is the, the title of Sandra Blow's work is Reeling Water and I've heard someone say that in fact it's about the walking up and down from her studio to the town to where the shops are and the sound of the water alongside the road and clearly she was taking in her environment and it comes out as, as shape and colour. 